Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at setting up our character sheets and getting ready for and running combat encounters. So the first thing that we're going to do is click back into Dwarfy, take a look at our character sheet, and you may remember when we made Dwarfy originally that we came down here to create actor, we gave her name, uh, this character's name will be bad guy, and we left it at character because it was going to be a player's character. This is going to be an NPC, so we're going to swap over to NPC and take a look at what the differences are between the two character sheets. So the main things that you'll notice are that instead of a level, we have a challenge rating. Instead of XP earned to the next level up, we have how much XP they're worth if you kill them. Uh, in place of race, we have a type. We have an alignment over here, uh, but we're missing a background. Uh, but instead of a background, we have a source, so we can enter what book they're from, what page they're from, all that kind of good stuff. And on the NPC, you'll see that it then right away goes into attributes, where we've got attributes, features, spellbook, and biography tabs. Uh, and on our normal character sheet, we have health, armor class, speed, and hit dice. Uh, but since some of that doesn't apply to the NPCs, namely the hit dice, that gets moved down here a little bit. Uh, We've got all of our normal attributes. We can select proficiencies with those attributes uh, as expected. Um, and in terms of other things that are missing, uh, NPCs don't have weapon proficiencies, armor proficiencies, or tool proficiencies. Uh, other than that, they should have pretty much all of the same options down here. So if we wanted to add languages or damage immunities, we could click into this and check through uh, what each one has access to. Uh, you'll also notice that the NPC does not have access to this kind of dynamic uh, resource management where you can track uh, pretty much anything that you want. You can give it a name, say how many you have access to, whether it's a short or long rest. Um, you'll also see that there's not death saves, exha exhaustion, or inspiration, but there are legendary actions. You can say how many they've got and how many they've used. Uh, legendary resistances, layer actions, and then how many layer actions they have access to. Now if we start clicking through to features, uh, we can see that NPCs don't have this inventory tab, but they do have an inventory down here. Uh, and then if we click over to Spellbook and Biography, and we can do the same thing on Dwarfy and see the kind of things that they've got access to. And really, neither character has that much going on for them right now. And that's what we're going to change next. So the next thing that we're going to do is go over to attributes and we're going to give Dwarfy some random attributes. Let's say an 11 for strength, a 14 for dex, not 14, 10. That would be quite a lot. Uh, give her a 13 constitution, uh, an 18 with intelligence. Uh, and let's do a... 15 or 16 wisdom and say a 15 charisma as well and then we're going to go over to features and see that Dorfi doesn't have any character levels whatsoever so she's level zero and let's fix that next by going over to uh this class levels thing and this seems like the place that you'd go to level up your character you'd hit plus add but this brings up a new class option where you can fill out a completely custom and original class information, but uh, we're not really looking to do that right now. So let's close that out, delete it, and come over to a section that we actually haven't checked out so far over in the sidebar, just this second to the right icon for compendium packs. And you'll see over here that we've got actors and we've got items. In actors, we have the monsters uh, system reference document, uh, and then we also in items have class features, classes, items, spells, and trade goods. Now, some of these aren't actually items, but that's just how they're classified in the system. Uh, so let's actually click into classes and see that this is where we have access to barbarian, bard, cleric, you know, all the good stuff. Uh, we're gonna make Dwarfy into a wizard. So let's drag wizard onto her level uh, or onto her character sheet, and we'll see that suddenly we have a level one wizard. Now we can come in and click edit item and go over to details and say that she's got five levels in wizard. Uh, she's not any kind of special subclass. Uh, her hit dice are still just a D6. Uh, and now that we've set that, we can hit close. We can see that our max XP has gone to 14,000 to next level. Uh, we are level five. 
and we can also see that our hit dice have gone up to five but that our health has not so when it comes to leveling you still have to roll your hp yourself and add your constitution modifier manually so let's actually come over to the chat log and take a look at how rolling works so it works a lot like roll 20 so you type slash roll how many dice you want to roll and um, we're going to do five and then what type d6 so we're going to type slash roll 5d6 and we got 19 so we can add 19 hp let's see what our constitution modifier is it's plus one so that's plus five for uh or plus four for each additional level after the first one and actually that shouldn't have been 5d6 it should have been 4d6 so let's update that and now we're at 14 so we got 14 plus 4 is 18 uh, and that plus our original 10 brings us to 28 so we've got 28 HP on Dwarfy uh, poor poor wizards um, and that should be good now that we've got health figured out let's go back to the features tab and back to the compendium packs section and take a look at what is in class features just so we get an idea of what's in uh, each one of these sections this is where we have things like action surge additional fighting style for a wizard something like arcane recovery so let's go ahead and give that to dwarfy uh, it's super easy to go through and add things in the drag and drop system which is great and now that we've got some class levels and uh, arcane recovery in here let's actually take a look at spells and give dwarfy a spell uh, let's give her every low level wizards favorite spell fireball and pull that out and that doesn't come in here in the features that goes into the spell book now since wizards are a class that are supposed to prepare their spells there over here in the far right is an option for uh, toggling whether the spell is prepared and you can also up here filter all of your spells by uh, certain criteria like if you have them prepared if they're ritual if they're concentration reaction bonus action so you can find uh, quick and easy access to spells of a specific type and it, you'll also see that it automatically picked up what our spell casting ability is because we're a wizard it is using intelligence uh, and then one other thing to note is that uh, wizards also have spell slots like all other casters and since we're at level five we've got access to two third level spell slots so we see here that we've got uh two as our maximum and let's go ahead and update that to two out of two so this was a little confusing to me at first i thought the left side was representing how many you had already used but really it represents how many you have left so i originally set it to zero out of two to say oh i've still got two uses but that's not how it works uh it counts down and i should note that Foundry will help you keep track of which one of your spells are prepared, but it won't stop you from casting a spell that you don't have prepared. So keep that in mind. And one last thing to note is that Foundry will track your spell slot usage. So if you use a spell, it will decrease your spell slot count for that level. And if you run out of spell slots for a given level, it will also prevent you from casting a spell. So let's go over to the inventory section and also give her... Uh, something from the items compendium uh, I have already searched through dagger here so we'll pull one of those down and we'll also give her some leather armor and drag that down now in the inventory option we can also keep track of all of our currency uh, and all that good stuff we've got ac uh, access to consumables tools containers loot uh, all kinds of good stuff we can equip things so let's say that we come and we want to equip our leather armor we can equip that but we notice that our armor class does not actually update it won't automatically update your armor class because there are additional rules that could get in the way of automatically applying the armor class like uh, how monks calculate their armor and how some barbarians calculate their armor so that's something that we have to handle manually uh, and similarly with daggers we can come in and equip them that doesn't actually really do anything but it is a good way to keep track of what things you've already got on you now one other thing to note is that we have equipped leather armor but if we click into it we can actually see that it's equipped but we are not proficient so if we come over here to attributes we do have armor proficiencies and things like that that we can track but uh, as I said earlier 
a lot of this does not automatically prevent you from putting something on or casting a spell or something like that. It's more just a, a way of keeping track of things. And so we'll close that out. And this isn't too bad to set up an individual character. And it's probably reasonable to say, hey, players, come in an extra 15 minutes early before we start the game. Let's build out our character sheets, pull in our, our class features and all that kind of stuff. But if we had to do this for every single enemy, like if we had to do this for bad guy and all of his minions or anything like that, it would start to get a little tiring. Now, one very cool thing is that over here, you've already seen it. We've got the monster uh, system, reference, system reference document that we can open up. And we've got access to a whole bunch of enemies, basically everything that's already in the free system reference document. So that covers everything from dragons to grimlocks to flying swords to uh, a whole bunch of cool stuff. And so we're actually going to come in and we're going to grab, let's say, a couple of bandits. We'll drag out a bandit and we'll see that got their challenge rating, their XP, that they're on the monster manual, page 343. Uh, they've already got some health. They've already got armor. Uh, they already have attributes pre-rolled for them. If we come to the features, we see that they've already got a scimitar, a light crossbow, leather armor. Their AC is set up properly already. If they were a spellcaster, they'd already have their spells inserted. Uh, and we see that they've also got uh, a little bit of a description. And it mentions that the token artwork is by Forgotten Adventures. So shout out to Forgotten Adventures. Be sure to check them out on uh, Patreon or on their site if you need some tokens for uh, Foundry VTT. And it's really nice to have this because then we can just close that out and drag in another couple bandits so that our fifth level wizard can have somebody to fireball. Sorry about that misleading opening. This one is actually not going to cover combat. That's going to come in the next video, which is actually uploading at the exact same time as this one. I shot it all the way through and I tried to edit it down to be a more reasonable length, but uh, it it still wound up being way too long. So I split it into two parts, this one covering, uh, well, everything that you just saw. The next one will cover uh, actually running the encounter, uh, casting spells, uh, making normal attacks, character movement, uh, movement through the encounter rounds and things like that. So be sure to check it out. Uh, hopefully that'll be helpful to everybody. And thank you all so much for watching these and liking these and the nice comments that you've left. Uh, it's been really cool. I never really expected any of that. So. Uh, Thank you all so much. You've all been uh, really nice. I appreciate that. I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully this will still be helpful. Bye-bye.